Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today I have a what's for dinner video for you. I'll show you what we had for dinner this past week. We had some really easy and super yummy meals. So let's get into this week's what's for dinner. Tonight we are making air fryer chicken fajitas. If you don't have an air fryer, you can totally just put this on a sheet pan and put it in the oven but the air fryer made it really easy. There were almost no dishes, and this took me less than five minutes to put together, and it was super delicious. So let me show you what you'll need. I've got some fajita seasoning, a bell pepper, an onion, some oil. I'm using this adobo seasoning just because I have it on hand. You'll need a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I have some chicken here, but you can also use steak or shrimp. The first thing I'm going to do is take my basket from my air fryer and I'm going to spray it with this canola oil cooking spray just to make sure nothing sticks. I'm then going to take my onion. This is about a half of a large onion. I'm going to peel it and then slice it into thin strips. Now that the onion is sliced, I'm just going to get a large mixing bowl and put my onion in the bowl. And next I'm gonna take my green bell pepper and remove the seeds and slice that into strips as well. I really prefer to use red or yellow bell peppers, but green is what I had on hand, so that's what I'm using. I'm gonna add all of the bell peppers to the bowl and next I'm going to take my chicken breasts and slice those into thin strips. Next, I'm gonna take just a little bit of oil. Here I'm using vegetable oil. I'm gonna put a little bit on the chicken and then I'm going to season it with fajita seasoning. You can just do this to your taste or you can use a packet of fajita seasoning. And then again, I just had this adobo on hand and I'm trying to use it up. So I just sprinkled uh, a little adobo on here and then I'm just going to stir this around. You can also add some additional salt and pepper. I'm gonna hold off on that because my fajita seasoning already has some salt in there, but you can adjust the seasonings to you and your family's preference. Once that's mixed together, I'm just going to put it into my basket and then put it into my air fryer. I'm going to cook this on 360 degrees. I will cook it for eight minutes, take it out, stir it around, and then cook it for another eight to 10 more minutes. And here are the fajitas after about 16 minutes. Next, I'm gonna show you what we like to serve with our fajitas. You and your family can adjust this to whatever you all like. I have some fajita sized tortillas, some hot sauce, some Taco Bell Baja sauce, some sour cream, and some of this salsa from Trader Joe's. I'm really picky about the salsa from the grocery store. A lot of them I don't like, but I actually really like this kind. I have some lettuce and tomato, shredded cheese, homemade guacamole that's just avocado, lime, and salt, and some tortilla chips. And here are our plates. Again, this was really, really easy. It was ready in less than 20 minutes, and it was really good. Tonight for dinner, I am going to be making meatloaf. Now I do not use a recipe and I do not measure when I make my meatloaf. I just eyeball everything. I will do my best to give approximate measurements, but feel free to make this your own. Here is what I am going to be using tonight for my meatloaf. First, I'm gonna be using a pound of this meatloaf mix. This is ground pork, ground veal, and ground beef. I typically just use ground beef, but this was on markdown at Food Lion, so I wanted to go ahead and use this up tonight. 
I will be using an egg. Now you can easily double or triple this recipe. Just make sure that you use one egg for every uh, pound of ground meat that you use. I have some fresh garlic. I'm going to use just a little bit of this onion and dice it up very, very fine. Some salt and pepper, some breadcrumbs, some ketchup, some Worcestershire sauce, and just a little bit of milk. To make my meatloaf, I have got my oven preheated on 350 degrees. I'm going to take a little bit of this large onion and I'm going to very finely dice it. I'm then going to add it to a large mixing bowl. I'm then gonna add an egg. I'm then going to add some ketchup. I added about a quarter of a cup or four tablespoons. Next is the Worcestershire sauce. I added about a half a tablespoon of this. Next, I'm going to add some breadcrumbs. I added probably just under a third of a cup. Now I'm going to add some pepper. Then I'm going to add about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And last, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of milk and then I'm going to add about a clove of garlic minced. I like to add everything to my mixing bowl and mix it all up really well before I add my ground meat. I just feel like that helps me not overwork the meat. So here I am, I've got everything added in my bowl and I'm just gonna take a fork and get that all mixed together really well. Now that that's mixed together, I'm going to take my ground meat and put it into my bowl and then combine that. I started out just for the sake of the video trying to use a fork and then quickly decided to just get in there with my hands. You want to make sure that everything is well incorporated, that you don't have like a big lump of ketchup in the middle, um, but you also wanna make sure that you're not overworking your meatloaf. So just mix it just until everything is incorporated together. I like to cook my meatloaf on a cookie sheet. You can also use a loaf pan, sometimes I do that, or you can also put these into muffin tins or just form them into little patties. I have taken my cookie sheet and lined it with foil. This makes cleanup much easier later down the road. I'm then going to spray that with some cooking spray and take my meatloaf mixture and put it out on my cookie sheet and just form it into whatever shape and whatever thickness you like. Next, I'm going to make my glaze for my meatloaf. We like a sweeter glaze. So I'm going to take about a quarter cup of ketchup and I'm going to put that into a small bowl. I'm going to add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce here, probably maybe not even a teaspoon, and then about a tablespoon of the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Sometimes I add the barbecue sauce, sometimes I don't. It just depends on what mood I'm in that day. And then I'm going to add about a heaping tablespoon of brown sugar. I'm going to stir that together really well, and then I am going to um, just put that on my meatloaf. Next, I'm going to put my meatloaf into my preheated oven set at 350 degrees. How long you cook your meatloaf really depends on how thick you've made your meatloaf. Um, for this size, it normally takes about 45 minutes. You'll just wanna make sure that you cook it until it's about 160 or 165 degrees internal temperature. While the meatloaf is cooking, I am going to get started on my sides. I'm keeping those super simple tonight. I'm gonna to start out by taking a can of these peas from Great Value that I have drained. I'm going to put those in a small saucepan with some salt and pepper and about a half a tablespoon of butter. I'll cook those on medium for about five to 10 minutes, stirring those occasionally until they're warm. And then I'll just turn them on warm and keep them warm until the meatloaf is done. For our other side, I am just making some good old Kraft macaroni and cheese. This is the cauliflower pasta. I'm just going to cook this according to the package directions.
Whenever I make box macaroni and cheese, I do like to add one extra ingredient. So once I've boiled my noodles, drained them, and then added my milk, butter, and cheese packet, I like to take a slice of American cheese and tear it into small pieces and stir that in. It just makes it really creamy and extra cheesy. Here's the finished meatloaf along with the macaroni and cheese and our peas. Tonight's dinner is going to be super, super easy. I was at Aldi earlier today and I saw these Southwestern style egg rolls. We love the Southwestern egg rolls at Chili's, so I grabbed these hoping that they'll be similar. When my husband saw them, he asked if we could kind of move around the meal plan tonight and have those for dinner. So I'm going to make those in the air fryer. You can also bake them in your oven and I'm just going to serve them with some side salads. Chili's serves these egg rolls with an avocado ranch. So I am going to make some homemade ranch dressing. I'm going to take a little bit less than half of that and just smash up this avocado and add it to make a homemade avocado ranch dressing. The first thing I'm going to do is to make my ranch so that it can be sitting in the refrigerator while my egg rolls cook. I'm going to take a half a cup of mayonnaise, a half a cup of milk. I'm going to add an additional about two tablespoons of milk um, just to thin mine out a little bit more. And then I'm going to do a tablespoon and a half of dry ranch seasoning mix. You just wanna whisk that together and then put that in the refrigerator. Um, you can eat it as soon as you make it, but it really is better if you can just let it sit at least 15 or 20 minutes in the refrigerator. You can also totally use bottled dressing. I use bottled all the time, but homemade dressing, it really does taste so much better. And it just takes a few more minutes to put together. For the avocado ranch for the egg rolls, I just have a small mixing bowl and I've taken my avocado and smashed it up. And then I'm going to take maybe about a third of this ranch dressing mix that I've made and just whisk that together with the avocado and set that aside. I cooked my egg rolls in the air fryer on 400 degrees for about 15 to 16 minutes. I did flip them over about halfway. You just want to cook them until they're brown to your liking and they're warm all the way through. Here are our plates. I just served the egg rolls along with the avocado ranch and some side salads and that's dinner tonight. Dinner tonight is gonna to be really quick and easy. I was going to make homemade pizza, but today was just a long day and I didn't feel that great. And so I just did not feel like uh, making homemade pizza. So I'm just gonna cook this Kroger pepperoni pizza in the oven and call that dinner. To go along with my pizza, I'm just gonna make myself a small side salad. For my husband, I'm gonna make him some like copycat boneless wings. I have about five or six of these Tyson air fried chicken nuggets left in my freezer and I wanna go ahead and use these up. So I'm going to cook these in my air fryer on 400 degrees for about seven or eight minutes. I'll flip them over and then cook them for another six or seven minutes just until they're nice and crispy. I'll then take them out of the air fryer and toss them in some buffalo sauce. You can also toss them in barbecue sauce, whatever you like, or you can also use um, popcorn chicken or a different kind of chicken nugget. And here are our final plates. I did doctor the frozen pizza up just a little bit. I added some black olives to my husband's half. And I've got his pizza with the boneless wings and some ranch dressing. And then I have my pizza and a small side salad. And that is dinner tonight. Tonight for dinner, I'm going to be making chicken pot pie. Usually when I make chicken pot pie, I just use a pre-made pie crust and for my filling, I just mix my chicken and vegetables with cream of chicken soup. But tonight I decided that I wanted to try to make the pie crust and the filling from scratch. I am not at all a baker, but I'm trying to get a little bit better and just try new things with baking. So I'm going to try it from scratch tonight, but if you don't have the time or patience for that, absolutely no worries. Just use a pre-made crust and cream of chicken soup for your filling and it will be delicious. The recipe for the pot pie, including the pie crust, comes from Crouton Cracker Jacks. 
I will put a link to his video in the description box below. So for detailed instructions and amounts, please go check out his video. To get started on the pot pie, I am just taking some butter and melting that in a medium pan over about medium heat. I am going to add some diced onion to that and just saute the onions until they are translucent. Once the onions are translucent, you are going to sprinkle in your flour and using a whisk, you'll want to mix that together and then cook your flour for about a minute. Next, you'll wanna add in your chicken broth and then your half and half. His recipe calls for milk, but I just happen to have some half and half on hand, so I'm just gonna use that. Now you'll want to make sure that you're whisking this pretty frequently so that you can get out all the lumps and make sure everything is incorporated. And next you're going to add your seasonings. You're going to add your seasoned salt. You'll add some pepper. You'll add some garlic powder. And some thyme. And you'll just want to mix all of your seasonings in and then it seemed just a little bit thick to me so I added maybe just about a quarter cup of water and then I continue to stir next you'll see me take a spoon and I'm just tasting the mixture just for seasonings I did end up adding just a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper once your mixture has thickened, you will want to turn off your heat and then add your cooked shredded chicken. You can use a rotisserie chicken here. I just took a couple of chicken breasts yesterday, put them in the crock pot, sprinkled some seasoning on them, and then shredded them once they were all done. I've then added a parboiled diced potato and some peas and carrots, and I'm just going to stir that to combine. And once it's mixed together, I'm going to set this aside and allow it to cool a little bit while I work on the pie crust. To make the pie crust, you're just going to mix your salt and flour together, and then you're going to cut in your shortening. You can use a fork or a pastry cutter if you have one. Once your shortening is about the size of small peas, you'll want to add in your cool water about a tablespoon or so at a time until your dough starts to form. You'll then turn it out onto a floured work surface, and with a rolling pin, you'll want to roll it out about an inch wider than what your pie crust is. Just be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to overwork your dough. Next, you're going to want to transfer your pie crust into your pie plate. And I'm just going to lift up the sides of the pie crust gently and just kind of let it fall into the pie dish and also make sure that there are no air bubbles in it. Next, you'll take your filling and put it in your pie dish. You'll then take your second pie crust and top your pie. You'll then wanna cut off any excess pie crust and then crimp your pie crust. Next, you'll wanna take an egg and beat it with a little bit of water and then brush that over the top of your pie. Finally, you will cut a few slits in the top of your pie to allow the steam to vent. And then you'll put this in the oven. I baked mine at 350 degrees and mine took about 55 minutes. Once this comes out of the oven, you will want to let this set for about 15 minutes before you slice into it. I did not let mine set long enough and so you'll see um, in just a few minutes my pie slices are not as pretty as they could be. 
Um, so like I said, you'll definitely want to let this sit for about 15 minutes or so, not only to cool down, but also to firm up a little bit. And here is the finished pie, y'all. This was so, so good. It was absolutely worth the effort to make the pie crust and the filling from scratch. I had leftovers the next day for lunch, and it was even better. Again, I will link the recipe video for Crouton Cracker Jacks video in my description box below. Please go check that out, and I highly recommend you giving this a try. It really wasn't that difficult. Like I said, he does a great job of doing step-by-step -step instructions. So again, I highly recommend this recipe. Now, I do want to make a quick note. In his recipe, he uses a 9-inch cake pan. I just used a 9-inch pie dish, not a deep dish, just a regular 9-inch pie pan. And so I halved his filling recipe. I used the full recipe for the pie crust, but I halved his filling recipe, and it was the perfect amount for this 9-inch pie plate. And here is my plate. I have a slice of the pie. I just served it with some side salad and homemade honey mustard. And again, this was really, really good. I hope you enjoyed this week's What's for Dinner video. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.